This is the video for the capacitated facility location problem. So click on the capacitated notebook in the starters folder. Okay, so a similar sort of setup as before. Um, and we're going to be again working with random instances, so I'll make this random package. And okay, so I'm going to suppose that the supply at each one of these factories is always going to be a thousand. So this is just to make the instances uh, have a, a nice property. Um, so when I draw them, they'll look look pretty. Okay, so each one of these factories, I will get a supply of a thousand if we were to build them. And then we're going to suppose that every one of these demand points also has a uniform demand. I'm just going to say everyone wants five. And then to make the, the costs work out nicely, I'm going to say that the factory cost here is always going to be uh, 30,000 times that random number between zero and one. Just random dot random. Okay. So again, no, uh, no systematic reason why I've chosen these numbers other than I just it made the example work nicely. Okay, so otherwise I think the rest of this is pretty similar. We'll draw those hundred candidate factory sites. I'll do the same thing for the demand points, a thousand demand points, and again we're going to use rectilinear distances. Okay. So let's start building our model. So first we'll create the model object. Next we'll create the variables. Again, these are these variables are defined for every candidate factory location and every demand point. But a, a difference here is that this is no longer going to be a, a zero one variable. So it's not cap or capturing the proportion of demand, it's capturing the number of units of demand that are that this demand point J receives from factory I. So this I, I could make as integer, maybe I'll go ahead and do that. So think of this as like the, the number of turbine blades that we're sending from a factory to a demand point. So we don't want to send half of a turbine. OK, and then our. Factory location decisions are also binary. We have that for each. We're sorry, they're also integer specifically they're binary. Um, and that's. For every one of these candidate factory locations, we have that. Uh, OK. So I think our objective. Is similar to before, maybe the exact same with a slightly different interpretation. So again, we're. Minimizing. And the expression that we're minimizing has two parts. So we have the transportation costs. Three costs. The factory cost, I think, will be the same. So, back I I, and we sum this over all I. And then the left term is the transportation cost. So, this is going to be that cost IJ times XIJ. This is over all I and J. Now the only difference here compared to before is the kind of the units going on here. So previously X 
X was the proportion of demand. So this cost also had to be in terms of proportion of demand. But now X is in terms of units. So let's say number, number of turbine blades. So this cost now needs to be in appropriate unit, units. This needs to be the cost to transport one turbine blade from factory at I to demand point J. But in our application, we've got this random instance. And so the interpretation isn't uh, super important. Let's see, something went wrong. Did I not run one of these cells? Cost IJ, X IJ. Okay, so when I defined X, I should have done the type is integer. Okay. Okay. So the constraints are very similar to before. I guess the, the units have changed, which is the only thing we have to be careful about. So we have to add a constraint for each demand point. And that constraint should, should say that you get 100% of your demand. So previously, we would say equals one. But now we're not working in proportion of demand, we're working in actual units. So we need to make sure that this equals demand, which we set this to be five. So this is always five actually in our instance. And then on the left side, I should express how many units am I sending? from I to J and add this over all different choices of I. Okay, so I think that's good. Um, so our next constraint says, um, if no factory is built at site I, then it can't serve any demand. So we're gonna have this constraint for every choice of I. So we're gonna have something is at most something in fact, it's I of I times the decision to build at I. So if if we build a factory at I, then this Y variable will equal one. So this right hand side is going to be the supply at that factory, which I think we said was always that same number. We said it was always a thousand. Okay. Um, and then if we don't build this factory, then this Y is zero, this right hand side becomes zero. And it says that we can't uh, serve any demand. Okay. So this left hand side needs to be essentially how many turbines are we sending out of this factory? Or how many blades? So this should be XIJ. And that's over all of the different J's that we send to. So J is demand, demand points. Okay. And then I should, like before, I should do m.update so it doesn't print everything. Um, there's one extra constraint that we talked about in class. And it's like what we would write when we did this. We would write this for every I and set of factories and for every J and the set of demand points. Uh, but the tricky thing now is that, you know, Y is still a binary variable, but X is no longer a binary variable or a continuous variable between zero and one. X is now in terms of number of turbines. So, 
we need to make sure that when, you know, if, if y is zero, it's fine for x to be zero. That's actually what we want. Uh, but when y is one, when the factory is opened, we don't want to limit ourselves just to get one turbine blade from that factory. So the, the most that we would ever get from this particular factory is what's our demand. So like change, we've got to multiply this right-hand side by the demand. So whether we add this constraint or not, I think doesn't affect the optimal solution. I think the, the feasible region in terms of the integer program is still the same, but this might help strengthen our LP relaxation. But I think we, we don't we don't necessarily need it. Those constraints. I'll again. This is just me. I'll propose to set this method parameter equal to three for concurrent, and then we'll optimize. Okay. So again, quite quickly, it solves. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, and I'm going to rearrange some of this again. Okay, that looks good. Let's try running that. So you see here that the picture is also quite funky. That we've chosen two factories that are actually pretty close to each other. I think this is a, a consequence of the, the factory opening costs. Probably these two factory locations just got a, just because of the randomness and the factory cost, I think they got a really small cost. So I think to make this a little more realistic, I could say something like, I don't know, plus something. Maybe I won't. Let's just see if, if that would look any different. Oof. It's not pretty either. Okay, I don't know if that looks any better. There's some weird shaped surface regions, but anyway, I think that does it for this capacitated facility location model. Um, okay.